Here we're going to look at a solution to problem B3 from the 2001 Putnam exam. So let's look at the statement. So for each natural number n, we want to define this angle bracket n to be equal to the closest integer to the square root of n. And then our goal is to evaluate this infinite sum. So it's the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 2 to the angle bracket n plus 2 to the minus angle bracket n over 2 to the n. So before we get going, I want to give you guys some hints so maybe you can try it on your own first. The first hint is to solve angle bracket n equals k, and so that will give you a range of n values that achieve the same k value. And then we're going to use that to create a double sum. And from there, it's really just kind of plugging and chugging and uh, working with summations. Okay, so give it a go with these hints and then we'll come back for a solution. Hopefully you were able to try the problem with those hints and make some good headway, and now we're ready to look for a solution. So like I said before, step one here is to solve this equation given by angle bracket n equals k, where k is a natural number. And I want to do this by looking at it on a number line and then using some argument involving um, inequalities on that number line. Okay, so I'm going to start over here and I'll put k minus 1 on the number line. Here I'll put k, and then over here I'll put k plus 1. Then I also want to put k minus a half, and then over here I'll put k plus 1 half. And so now notice, for angle bracket n to be equal to k, we need the square root of n to be inside of this open interval. So in other words, we have angle bracket n equals k if and only if the square root of n is between k plus 1 half and k minus 1 half. And you might be worried here because what happens if we have the square root of n equals k minus half or the square root of n is exactly equal to k plus half? But that's impossible because that would imply that the square root of 2 was a rational number, but we know that's not the case. Okay, so now what I want to do is square both sides, or all three sides of this inequality. That'll give me k minus half squared is less than n, which is less than k plus half squared. And now I can multiply these out, so that'll give me k squared minus k plus one quarter, and n is going to be bigger than that, but then n is going to be less than k squared plus k plus one quarter. Okay, great. And now the next thing that we want to do is use the fact that n is a natural number and k is a natural number to revise this inequality a little bit. If n is bigger than k squared minus k plus a quarter, then that means that n is bigger than or equal to k squared minus k plus 1 because that is the first natural number that is larger than this k squared minus k plus a quarter. Okay, great. And then kind of the same thing goes right here. If n is less than k squared plus k plus a quarter, then n is less than or equal to k squared plus k. Great, and I should have been writing um, if and only if statements all down here, and so let's see what we have. We have angle bracket n equals k if and only if n is between k squared minus k plus 1 and k squared plus k, and that includes those endpoints. Okay, so I'll bring that up to the top, and then we'll start working on the sum. On the last board, we argued that angle bracket n equals k if and only if n is between k squared minus k plus 1 and k squared plus k, and that includes those endpoints. So now what I want to do is start with my goal sum and rewrite it so that we can use this fact. And the way I'll do that is I will change this to a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sum where the angle bracket n equals k of, now it's going to be 2 to the k plus 2 to the minus k all over 2 to the n. Now I'm going to use the fact that the angle bracket of n equals k when we have this inequality to rewrite this inner sum. So now I'll have the sum k equals 1 to infinity. And while I'm at it, I'm going to factor this 2 to the k plus 2 to the minus k out because this inner sum only depends on n. Obviously, the bounds depend on k, but the sum itself only depends on n. So we have 2 to the k plus 2 to the minus k. 
and then my inner sum will be n equals k squared minus k plus one all the way up to k squared plus k and then I'm going to rewrite this as one half to the n. Good. And so now notice if we were to distribute this back to the inside, we would have exactly what we started with up there. So these are the same sums. Now what I want to use is a fact about partial sums of geometric series because that's exactly what we have in this inner sum. We have a partial sum of a geometric series where the common ratio is one half. And that goes like this. So if we take the sum n equals a to b of r to the n, we're going to get r to the b plus 1 minus r to the a over r minus 1. So like I said, this is a pretty standard fact for partial sums of geometric series. So I'll let you guys check that if you need to, but this is something good to keep in mind whenever you're dealing with these kind of problems. So we'll use this rule right here on this inner sum, and that'll allow us to write this as the sum k equals 1 to infinity. We have 2 to the k plus 2 to the minus k, so that's still on the outside. And now we have 1 half to the, now n evaluated at this point right here, plus 1. Notice it's b plus 1, so we have uh, k squared plus k plus 1. And then we're going to subtract from that 1 half and then k squared minus k plus 1. And then we divide all of this by r minus 1, but that's going to be 1 half minus 1, so that's going to be a negative half. Great. Again, because we just did half minus 1. So now let's see what we can do in terms of simplification. So now what I would like to do is maybe take this minus sign here and change it to a plus by changing this to a plus and then putting a minus in front of this. In other words, we're switching the order of the subtraction. Um, and maybe that's the only thing that we'll do for this step. And then uh, I'll erase the board and we'll pick up at the next spot. So this is going to be uh, 2 to the k plus 2 to the minus k. And now we have 1 half to the k squared minus k plus 1 minus 1 half to the k squared plus k plus 1. And that is all over 1 half. So like I said, I just took that minus sign and changed the order of subtraction. Okay, I'll go ahead and bring this up and then we'll finish it off. On the last board, we ended up at this point. So I've changed it a little bit. I'll notice how we've changed it. So we've got the, k, the sum k equals 1 to infinity, 2 to the k plus 1 plus 2 to the minus k plus 1. So those plus 1s came in because I took this half that was in the denominator. That becomes a 2 in the numerator, which adds 1 to those as you distribute it. And then instead of 1 half to those exponents, I put 1 over 2 to those exponents. So we have 1 over... 2 to the k squared minus k plus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the k squared plus k plus 1. Now the next thing that we're going to do is just distribute out what's happening inside the summation. So now I've got this sum k equals 1 to infinity. Now when I multiply this first term here and this first term here, I'll get 2 to the k plus 1 over 2 to the k squared minus k plus 1. And now next, maybe I'll do this first term here and this uh, second term here. So that's going to give me minus 2 to the k plus 1 over 2 to the k squared plus k plus 1. And then next, maybe we'll do this one with this one. So that's going to give me plus 2 to the minus k plus 1 all over 2 to the k squared minus k plus 1. And then finally, maybe the second terms from both. And that's going to give me a minus 2 to the minus k plus 1 over 2 to the k squared plus k plus 1. Okay, good. And now we can go ahead and simplify all of these using exponent rules. So notice now we're going to have the sum k equals 1 to infinity. And now this 1 and this 1 will cancel each other. And then this k can go down to the denominator and we'll have 2 to the k squared minus 2k. So we can write, in other words, that first term as 1 over 2 to the k squared minus 2k. Good. And now let's see what we have here. So we can take this k plus 1 and cancel that k plus 1 that's happening downstairs. So that's going to be minus 1 over 2 to the k squared. 
Okay, now let's see what we have here. We can take this minus k in the numerator, cancel that minus k in the denominator. This one up here will cancel the one down there and that'll leave us with plus one over two to the k squared. So immediately we can see that those terms are gonna cancel. And then finally, we're gonna have minus, so this minus k here will go down there and become a k squared plus two k. And then this one and this one will cancel. So in other words, we have one over two to the k squared plus two k. So now instead of having a sum of four terms, we have a sum of two terms. And in fact, I'm gonna split this up into pieces. So I've got the sum k equals one to infinity of one over two to the k squared minus two k minus this sum k equals one to infinity of one over two to the k squared plus two k. Okay, good. Now let's go ahead and bring that up and then we're almost home free. Okay, so let's see where we are. Our goal sum is equal to now this difference of two sums, which we were able to split that into, into a difference because it's clear that both of these converge if you compare them to geometric series. Now what I wanna notice is that I can re-index the second sum so that it looks almost exactly like this first sum. And what I wanna do is I'll re-index the second sum by letting k turn into k minus two. So notice that's gonna make our new starting point equal to three. So let's see what we get when we do that. So now we'll have k squared uh, plus two k is going to become k minus two squared plus two times k minus two. So now multiplying out that out, we get k squared minus four k plus four plus two k minus four. But now these fours cancel and then these guys also simplify and we're left with this is equal to k squared minus two k, which is exactly the kind of term we have right here. So that has a simplification effect. So let's just reiterate what we're doing. We're doing this change of index to this second sum. And let's see, that is gonna change this into, well, the first sum doesn't change at all. We have the sum k equals one to infinity of one over two to the k squared minus two uh, k. And then we're gonna have minus, this is the sum. Now it starts at k equals three because when k minus two equals one, k equals three, it's gonna end at infinity. And now we have one over two to the k squared minus two k. Now we can combine these if we take the first two terms out of this. So let's go ahead and take the k equals one term out of this. So if we take the k equals one term out of this, we have one over two to the one minus two, plus we'll take the k equals two term out of this as well. So that'll be uh, one over two to the four minus four. So that's what we get for the k equals one and the k equals two terms. And now we have plus this sum k equals three to infinity of one over two to the k squared minus two k minus the sum k equals three to infinity of the same thing. But now these two will cancel and we're left with this number right here. But notice this number right here is one over two to the minus one. In other words, that's three plus one over two to the zero, so that's one. So our final answer is three. Okay, so now that's a good place to stop.